Hello, everyone, and welcome to our July general energy forecast. So I want to start off our general energy forecast talking about the tarot card for this month. And that tarot card is the devil card. And all the devil card is really asking us to do is to be aware of addictive patterns of behavior that we might slip into from time to time. And those addictive behavioral patterns don't have to have really anything to do with other substances. It can be an addiction to catastrophizing. It can be an addiction to thinking that you're all on your own and that you have to do everything by yourself and that the, there is no help from the universe. It can be the addiction of that thought of saying, you know, putting out positive intentions and then immediately talking bad about them. Those are addictive behaviors. And all the devil card is asking us to do is to simply be aware of those addictive patterns of thought or behavior, emotionally or physically, and say, you know what, I'm willing to change this, or I'm willing to think in a different way. I'm willing to act in a different way. And that's all the devil card is really asking us to do is to just be aware of those and then to, and not, you know, if we, if you look at traditional Rider Wake deck, it's, you know, this devil like figure holding on to these humans and, you know, they're kind of chained. We want to break those chains of that addictive behavior emotionally, physically mentally to the best of our ability by choosing again, by choosing a new way of being, a new way of acting, a new way of feeling. And so that's actually going to take us into our reading for this month. And this was really inspired by the Oracle of the Angels. And the spread that we're going to be using is called the Creative Star Spread. And it's a beautiful six card spread. And the very first card is the water card or the feeling card. And what we have here is Sonia Choquette, or from Sonia Choquette's, the answer is simple, the create card. So we really have this urge this month to expand, to let something new into our lives, be that mentally, emotionally, physically, we are ready to expand. We're ready for something new. And we have to remember when it comes to create, we are the paintbrushes that the divine uses to bring forth manifestations. And that's what we have to remember about this creative energy or that create card is like, when we are in alignment with spirit and, you know, we get this urge to create something, we have to remember not to do it from that selfishness, like, oh, look what I've created. Look how great I am. It's more from that soul fulfillment and being like, oh, this feels so good. Just the act of bringing something from non-physical or from the mental realm into the physical realm, it just feels so good at that soul fulfillment of creation. So that's our first card. It's all about that impulse to create, that impulse to expand, but remembering we're not doing it from the standpoint of, look how great I am. Instead, we're doing it from the standpoint of it feels so good because it is our natural state to be in divine co-creation with spirits, feeling that soul fulfillment as we go through the process of creation. And sometimes in that process of creation, we need our next card, which is represented by, this is called the seed card and the element of air. So this is, again, all about thoughts, beliefs, ideas. And so this is from Colette Baron reads The Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. So this is the Lady of the Mirror, Reflections and Non-Judgments. Well, that goes with, of course, the Law of Attraction, which is our thoughts create our experience. And so we really have to look at what is it that we want to experience? What is it that we would like to start 
feeling a little bit more of in our lives and really looking from that non-judgmental place of what right now is in our react, what right now is in our experience? What are we experiencing? Do we like some aspects of what we're experiencing? Do we not like others? And not doing it from that judgmental place of, oh, I'm so bad or, oh, this is, it's just okay. That is no longer serving me. This still feels like it's serving me. So I'm gonna continue on you know, with this, but I'm gonna shift this. Because we have to remember, what is the world? The world is nothing more than that screen that we are seeing our thoughts, beliefs, ideas all projected on. And we're not here to judge ourselves based on what we are seeing. We are only here so that we can see it and we can say, oh, okay, well, I don't really like that. Again, not from judgment of that is bad but from that place of observation and saying, okay, you know what? As I'm observing this from the standpoint of taking a step back, I am noticing that that's not serving me, that that pattern of thought is actually just keeping me going in this circle. And I'm tired of going in this circle. I'm ready to you know, break out of it. I'm ready to elevate to the next rung of that circle whatever it may be, but we have to be very aware. And so this is a little bit more, we could say about contemplating. You know, there are gonna be action steps that need to be taken, yes. However, first we need to get into that energy, get into that frequency and vibration of let me become aware of what I am currently experiencing. And you can ask yourself this question. It's one of my favorites. It's what I learned from A Course in Miracles. And it, the question really is, what must I believe in order for this to be happening? And then that's going to open you up to be willing to look at your thoughts, look at your beliefs. It's kind of like uh, popping the hood on your car because now you're asking a question. It's not like, why is this happening to me? Okay, well, what must I believe in order for this, for, in order for me to be experiencing this at this point in time? And one story that I really like to share is that I, I believe it was a couple of days ago and it was like 1230 at night and all of a sudden, I mean, it was just boom boom, music. And I was just like, what is happening? And I mean, it was just super loud. I had no idea where, I mean, I went outside looking around. It wasn't our neighbors. It wasn't like anyone on our street. It was actually the neighborhood behind our neighborhood that was just blaring this music. And so I went inside and I was, you know, of course it's 1235 in the morning or at night, however you want to look at that. And I was just, you know, like, ugh man, like I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this. Like what is happening? Why is this happening to me? And when that thought came up, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. What must I believe in order for this to be happening? Well, I must believe that people are cruel. I must believe that the world's unfair. I must believe that I just can't get a good night's sleep. I must believe that uh, the area that I live in, you know, people are just disrespectful and, you know, just all of these things. And I was just allowing those thoughts to come up. And it's not because I'm judging myself. It's because I want to see what I'm believing, what I'm thinking about. Because again, what is happening? The world is always responding to my, I'm creating my experience through my own thoughts, beliefs, and ideas. I wanted to see what I was thinking. And then from there, I had to do some forgiveness work. And again, for me, that forgiveness work is I just, I forgive myself for believing that the world is unfair. The divine did not create a world in which, you know, some people get to act this way and others get to act that way. I forgive myself for seeing my brothers as, you know, separate from me. I forgive myself for believing in separation, so forth and so on. And then I did have to call the non-emergency line and then there was a battle with that because I started to be like, oh, I don't really want to call. And then I was like, well, why don't I want to call? Really being reflective, not judgmental. And I was like, well, I don't want those people to get mad at me. 
I don't want to seem like I'm a party pooper. I don't want to seem like I'm a tattletale. Uh, and just looking at those thoughts, beliefs, and ideas and being willing in the here and now, in that present moment, not the past, not in the morning, right then, right there, to then forgive and do what I needed to, what I felt I needed to do in that moment. And do you know the moment I, I think I called, I told them my address, told them, you know, what was happening within, and, you know, I hung up the phone and then within five minutes, the music turned off anyway. So it all got handled and that was it. So again, be very aware that your thoughts, beliefs, and ideas create your experience. Be willing when you are in an experience that is disturbing your peace to ask yourself the question, what must I believe in order for this to be happening to me, in order for, the, in order for me to be experiencing this? And then just be honest with yourself. So then we're going to go to our next one, which is the knowing. And I love the knowing because it is the here and now card. And I want to read you the affirmation for this one because it's absolutely beautiful. And it's actually one of my favorites. Uh, there's two cards that actually came out. It's my two favorite affirmations in the whole book. So the here and now is I live in the here and now, always conscious of my active presence within the universe and of my work on earth. I choose to live in the present moment. I am aware of what I create with my thoughts, my words, my deeds. I trust for I know that all comes to me at the right moment when I am ready. And so all that's really asking us to do, the knowing, we do not create from the past, nor do we create from the future. We create our experience in the here and now. And that is what the divine is asking us to do. Don't go to the past. Don't go to the future. Be in the present moment as much as possible. And from there, we're going to go to our next card, which is the action. And I think the action is kind of funny because it is be patient. And, you know, when it comes to creating or creating our experience we want it now we want it right now and if it's not happening right now then why isn't it you know then we start questioning why isn't it happening right now we try to diagnose it we start analyzing the whole situation none of this month is about analyzation it is about reflection and what is patience let's kind of look at patience a little bit more because I, I don't think we really look at it enough Patience, I think a lot of times we think patience is like sitting on our thumbs and waiting for something to happen. I like to see patience as more a, getting ourselves into alignment for the next right action step that spirit's going to bring to us. That's how I like to look at patience. And that could be meditating. That could be carry, you know, the, the old, uh, I believe it, it's Buddhist um, teaching, you know carry the water, dig the well, like do what's in front of you to do. And as you are doing that, know that the universe is, you know, conspiring to get everything together for you. Because in truth, it's already done. It's already there. All that's happening is we are moving more and more into alignment with it. And that's why we got that be patient card and we're getting, you know, be here, be now, do what's in front of you to do and know that you will be guided to your next step. And how we're going to get guided is with the spirit and which is the spirit of joy. And that is with an open and innocent heart. We have to be willing to be open hearted because when we are open hearted, we are in that state of openness and innocence. We are not trying to force anything to happen. We are not trying to make anything happen. We are simply allowing the transformation because we see all the butterflies. We're allowing that transformation to occur. And that open heartedness also brings us into that innocence that is never, that has never left us. You know, you may think, well, I'm older now. I'm more mature. Sure you are. You're more mature, but it doesn't mean that you've lost your innocence. 
And I think that's something we tend to forget is, well, now I'm more mature and we forget to play. We forget to wonder. We forget to have fun. We forget that we have no idea how the universe works really. And to be okay with that, because when we are in that innocence, we can see the world through the eyes of a child. And that doesn't mean that we just believe everything and that we're super gullible. It means we see the true intention. We're not looking at the content of what we're seeing. We're looking at the intent of what we are being shown. You know, and this was a quote that just kind of came to me when I was meditating on all of these cards is the innocence The innocent see what the jaded refuse to acknowledge. What does that mean? I'm going to be really honest with you. I have no idea, but I just, it came to me and I was like, oh, that sounds just really, it sounds really good. And so who are the jaded? Well, the jaded are those people who are like, oh, I'm so mature. I've grown beyond this, you know, type of thing. And yeah, do we grow beyond things? Of course we do, but we have to remain open-minded, open-hearted. And just allow ourselves to go into new experiences to have these transformative moments. And then our last one is the message, how to let go and allow this new feeling of creation or of creating to come in. And like I said, this is my second favorite affirmation in this whole entire deck. And it is the comfort card. And the affirmation is, I release my fear for a divine presence comforts me. In trust, I surrender myself to this presence. I let go of all worry and I choose to relax. Well-being surrounds me and I am comforted by the knowledge that I am never alone. So if we want to know how to let go and allow this new feeling in, right there, that card, that affirmation just told us, choose to trust, choose to surrender, choose to relax, choose to know that well-being surrounds you. And that there is to rest in the knowledge that the divine is guiding you. And I think that's one of the biggest messages for this month is to relax into that divine plan, to relax into the divine masterpiece, whatever that may be. And be present, be here, be now. And if you start to find yourself getting like really worked up and I'll tell you a personal parable about that. So when we were first um, in the process of getting our house last year, um, there, you know, we were looking, nothing was happening. Like we were looking and looking and looking and looking and nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing. And then just one day our, you know, we just kind of let it go. And I, you know, said to my mom and my dad at that time, I was like, you know, if we don't find anything, then we don't find anything. Like, we're just gonna, you know, like, that's it. And it was just kind of like this generalized, like letting it go. If we find a house, great. If we don't, we'll just continue the rent, the one that we were in. And then I swear to you all, two days later, our realtor calls. She's like, hey, I just found this awesome, you know, new build. I think you guys are really going to like it. Why don't you come out and look at it? We go out there. It's exactly the floor color we want. It's exactly the cabinet color we want. It's exactly like it's facing south. The door is red, which is like really good for feng shui. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And it was lot one, one, one. And I was like, you can't make this shit up. I was ecstatic. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And so like getting really excited and then we were going on a trip anyway. So the even more excitement for that. And, you know, they're like, oh, by the time you get back from your trip, you'll be able to move into your new house. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And so we went on the trip, had a great time, came back and well, we were not able to move in immediately because what was I thinking about? What was my mom thinking about? What was my sister thinking about when we were on this trip? How you know, we were going to move into the house and here's what we were going to do. And here's how we were going to do it. And like making all these plans for the future. And we really left the goal because remember when it comes to that create card, we left the goal of peace. We stopped looking at like, what is the purpose? Because that's something else we can look at for this month. Like, what is the purpose of why I want to create this? Is this because I just want it? Or is it truly a desire? Because remember, a want is just like, 
I want that because it looks cool. I think it's going to bring me happiness. That's the ego. The desire is more like, oh, I'm just pulled to this. There is something here that I just, I need to experience whatever that may be. And we don't know what it is. It's just like, it's just a magnetic pull. And it brings us that soul fulfillment. It's not based on selfishness. It's based on that soul fulfillment. So we had kind of lost the goal of peace. We had lost the purpose. And so we come back and there's just delay, 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 delay. And it's just like, oh my gosh. And, you know, we were already like, we had to move out of our, our rental home. And so there were just all these problems and then, you know, just let it go. And I was like, you know, if we have to, if we have to call the rental company and be like, Hey, we need to do a month, a month. They did give us that option. It was more expensive, but it was an option. And so, you know, we just, I forgave it. I asked myself, went to that non-judgment. What must I believe in order for this to be happening? Came back to the here and now was patient, gave it over to the divine, was open-hearted No, saying, you know what, spirit, I give this over to you. My goal is peace. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to handle this. So I'm going to need you to take it from me. So really surrendering. And then our fabulous realtor, uh, Stacy went to bat for us. And I mean, we were moved in literally two days before, like we were supposed to, you know, vacate our other, our rental home and everything was perfect. Everything was great. And not only did we get to move in before that other, you know, rental thing expired? We also got money back. We also got like some sort of like bonus check or bonus thing because my dad was, you know, is a veteran in the military, so forth, so on. And it was just like this amazing experience. And it was just like, wow, after I forgave, after I let go, after, you know, we just, everyone surrendered and was like, you know what, the goal is peace the divine comes through because the divine does not work at a level one, two, three, four, five, or even 9.9. .9. The divine works at an 11. Okay. And not this, it's a perfect 10, but there's always, every time I have done this, there's always an added bonus that the divine kind of throws in there and it doesn't throw it in there. It's like, oh good. It's not a pat on the back. It's because it is your divine right to be happy, to have miracles, to be joyful in the act of co-creating with spirit. It's not that pat on the back, like, good job, you followed the rules. It's more just like, oh, okay, great. You surrendered, you gave it over to me. And the divine's only will for us is to be happy. And it's like, here, I'm going to give you everything that's going to make you happy, whatever you're open to, whatever you're receptive to. And you can't be open and receptive if you have a closed heart and a closed mind. They both have to be open in order for you to receive everything that's coming to you, in order for you to receive that comfort of the divine, that assuredness, that promise that all will be well. So I thank you for joining me. I thank you for being here. If you're interested for the month of July to get your own personalized reading each week for the month of July, and we can either do that live on Zoom or you can just get it recorded and it'll go to your mailbox or your email. Then you can go ahead and just go to my website, awakeningmiracles.org. And Awakening Miracles is all one word. And yeah, that's going to end it for me for today. I thank you for joining me. I thank you for being here. And I hope that whatever divine creation you are inspired to make, you do out of joy.